Fantastic. We are recording. So my name is Kate Cherry and I'm an independent consultant with Arbonne International and I'm also a regional director with the Athena Network. And here I'm joined today by the lovely Veronica Suha, who is a personal performance coach and also holistic business coach. We met at networking, we realised back in February, March, March maybe. And um, I had a one-to-one -one with Veronica and I had a little session with her as well to understand a little bit more about what it is she does so I'm in a better position to be able to refer her business and um, because that's a nice thing to do when you get to know each other it's important to find out more about each other's business because that's going to make you help you think about um people you know I'm veering off into my other profession here when I should be talking about we hear about health and well-being so um Veronica, it's lovely to see you today. Welcome on to this little interview, which is all about you and what you do. Hello. Hello. Hi, Kate. Thank you so much. Hello to everyone who is uh, who is listening. So my name is Veronica. And uh, yeah, thank you, Fake. Uh, thank you, Kate, for having me. Thank you. You're very welcome. So tell me a little bit about, um, obviously, I had the long version. We had a lovely catch up to find out more about each other. So tell me how... Uh, you came to do what you do and, and what it is you do, how you help people. Okay, so um, so I'm, a, as you said, I'm a personal performance coach and holistic business coach. And in a sense, I'll help mostly women, but I have a few clients, men as well, but I'll, I'll stick with the women for now. Um, uh, women who want to succeed, but who want to succeed without overwhelm, without overworking and without burning out. Um, and how I got to that, you can probably guess that that was part of my own journey <laughs> uh, through having a um, career for 15 years in quite high, very actually demanding and stressful role, which I loved, which felt like my purpose. But uh, unfortunately, I was not managing myself within the whole uh, scenario uh, very well. So I burned out and then through the journey of actually um, myself learning how better to do things, what are the possibilities are there and what were the kind of things that were actually keeping me stuck in that overwhelm and in that behavior I was running. Um, so through that, I got into coaching and I got into helping other women so um, or men. Um, so there are two sort of there are two main areas of um, of women or clients I tend to work with. Where one is the one is the section of professionals who, I guess, what I was before um, when you're running on the top of your career, but then you find yourself at your success or what seems success to everyone else, and it is success in those uh, let's say um, values that are appreciated in the business world uh, but you finding yourself at the point of a burnout um, so the success has a little bit of a hole there so I help these women to look at it and redefine what success actually means for them and then make changes to what their idea of success is uh, rather than maybe what they were kind of heading to without um, thinking about it too much and then on the second side I also work with uh, entrepreneurs who want to take their business to the next level, but finding themselves in the similar within the similar issues of being overwhelmed and and burning out at the same time, though they are really ambitious and they do want to do things and they do want to progress and fulfill their purpose, which they feel is their purpose, their work, their business, and help other people perhaps. Uh, but they're being stopped and they're kind of being, yeah, running on the running on the wheel and not really progressing because of. Um, not being able to overcome these issues or perhaps even uh, confidence in business and taking their sort of next step further. So that's the main, uh, that's the main area where I, where I'm the most helpful. I love the, um, the dichotomy there is there that I could see between, because I've been both things, when you're a corporate professional succeeding and you said something along the lines of, you're veering to going towards success when you're not actually even you know that might not even be your goal you might that's how it works in corporate isn't it it's like next step promotion next project da 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 da, da. whereas in self-employed life entrepreneur life you can be quite capable of it but you, this is stopping you so exactly exactly it's interesting isn't it yes it is and that's often what entrepreneurs or 
anyone who makes a change from one environment to the other, the issue is still with you, realize the issue is with you and not in the environment. Not saying that the environment is perfect. Some environments are really prone to stress and then it's good to assess and then maybe change the environment, Shelley. Uh, but yes, it's, it's both sides. There's always external circumstances and there's always internal things within us that we carry that drive us the way we behave and what we do and how we do things yeah and you work traditionally as i would say but also you work with energy as well don't you yes so uh what my main um main way of looking at things i like to look at things holistically uh, because for me i think my journey has been like a full holistic transformation and if you look at things holistically or energetically it's bringing everything in and not leaving everything out so um how would i put that um so what what i like to combine is um because let's say in coaching you're always looking going forward uh, and sometimes you can miss some of those things maybe how people feel and it can have sometimes a little bit of a a little bit of a pushy pushy feeling which us who come from the background of overworking and so on probably trying to stay away so what I like to bring in the the work and work with the energy and work with the emotions of the person and how they feel and really take them into considerations because they feel like that for a reason and if there's a part of a part of a person that feels like doesn't want to move forward because it's scared of overwhelm because it's still scared of burning out because it's worried that they're going to have too much success or too little success or too much rejection and so on the person just won't move forward and won't be making the steps they can be they'll be making steps but it's not going to feel good to them it's going to feel really difficult they're going to be feel like they're dragging themselves forward whereas if we can look at all their parts they're all the parts of them whatever they feel whatever they however they see things whatever they expect whatever they believe in that's a lot of the belief will come in if they all aligned with where they want to go then they can go and actually it becomes easy or easier at least there's surely going to be challenges and it's really good to challenge ourselves we do want to go in the stretch zone but there are ways to do it nicely and there are ways to do it like being kind to ourselves rather than pushing ourselves and beating ourselves up when we're not doing things and being run by some of those old old patterns Got it. and when you and i uh, met there was I, I received a an email from you which was entitled how to pick up your business after summer and holidays and we just thought that would be a nice thing to talk about briefly here is some tips you might have we all I said to you before we started recording, uh, a colleague of mine called it walking through treacle. When you come back from holiday, and I know you you were on holiday as well, and it's like, oh my God, you can seem like the most, you got it together, organized person ever, but put me on holiday <laughs> and I come back and it takes me so long to get back onto it. So share your tips. What was your wisdom that you, or your own experience as well about, because um, all of this is drawn from our own experience, isn't it? Yes. So, how how did you manage that? It's really timely. So how do you pick it all back up after summer and the holidays? Great. Uh, yeah, we agreed with Kate. We both had that this summer <laughs> after holidays. And I just actually came from a long weekend uh, hiking in the Lake District. So, uh, But it was only three days, so it wasn't as much. But still, that transition time, it's, it's still there. So uh, there are a few things I really stopped and thought about it because when I came from my holidays back in early July um, and I went to Croatia with family and then I came to a very different environment, uh, coming back when there is no sea here in the UK, even though the weather was lovely and so on. But it was, I found it very difficult this year, I have to say, maybe not so other years. So that's why I really sat down and I was thinking how do I <laughs> how do I do this so there were a few things that I actually a uh, couple of things that helped me that I did did do before to prepare myself so one of the things also if not this time the next time uh, kind of preparing ourselves and that way supporting ourselves because we know this is how things may go um, so why not make it easier for ourselves next time right so before we go, 
Exactly. So okay. one thing um, that really helped me that before I went and I was still in that work mode where you actually say you've got everything organized, you know exactly what you need to be doing. I sat down and I put down three top priorities. When I come back, that helps me focus just these three things. And then I know where to start rather than that either blank or overwhelm <laughs> rather than anything in the middle. So that if anyone hasn't done that before, then maybe just sitting and picking one or two, just the key things, okay, to start with. And maybe, I think we're all really different, but uh, for me, it was starting with simple things that that are easy for me, perhaps, that I enjoy doing, just sort of to get me into it. And then I know I love working. So for me, it becomes quite easy to be honest. And most of us, if uh, most of your audience is also um, ladies who ha may have a tendency of cheating, overachieving, overworking, then probably they like working too. Um, so once you get into it, it's more the problem of <laughs> holding yourself to the right pace and not overdoing it, uh, not overdoing it again. A uh, couple more, couple more other things. Um, one thing that really actually worked for me was an opportunity rather than rushing back into everything again and rather than rushing into the same old routine that I did, actually to stop and seeing what I do want to come back and what I don't want to come back to. So one thing I realized, I looked at my calendar before I had holidays and I had things back to back, like seriously, like um, appointments or even my own and managing my own time. And I decided, OK, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm not going to put things back to back. I'm just going to do less. And that was mm. just that's the one thing I took away from my holiday as a change to go forward. So it will be um, different from everyone. But I think it's a nice opportunity not to jump at the same thing back, but actually look at it like, what do I want to take forward? What do I not want to take forward? And um, so one, uh, let's see what else I've noted. Um, uh, and then one theme was around kind of giving yourself time and giving yourself space and giving yourself some compassion and kindness, like not to push yourself back. Like we're not like we're not a button that we like switch on and then switch off. And as much as it takes, can take a few days to ease into holidays. It can take a few days to ease into work. So not being harsh on ourselves that the first day back, we're not doing as much as we would normally do. So um, that was very useful as well. And um, and I kind of like to add some, I always like to add some playful tools because they just kind of light, lighten up the <laughs> routine or life. So I thought, okay, I don't want to go back from holidays. So how do I still keep the holidays in? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, just continue reading my book and seeing, looking at other people's holidays and just not trying to cut myself off like from the holidays or from what I'm feeling, but actually letting it, letting it process the side while I'm, yes, I'm starting to do things, but I'll also let myself feel all these things I feel and let them sort of fade away and slowly they'll adjust and uh, as easy. And it's become so much more natural than like we have to stop and reprogram from moment to moment. I don't think we really work like that. Somebody might, I don't know. And then one um, one other key thing was um, was actually I was looking for motivation. I don't know how it was with you, but for me, um, like refinding my motivation why I'm doing what I'm doing and really coming to the core of it, which again can be questioning what you're doing and why you're doing it. <laughs> I would just say don't spend too much time with it, but um, um, but uh, it really helped me. I think I, I can't remember, I basically I ended up that I had a session with someone and just by having that coaching session, I was like, oh my God, yes, I know why I'm doing this. This is what I want to do. Like, I love it. It helps people that just seeing the other person on the other side who within an hour kind of change and, and brighten up, lighten up and uh, and their life can change. And that really motivated me like, yes, I do want to do that. So sending a couple of emails, yes, it's not a problem, actually, because there's a bigger 
there's a bigger purpose behind it. So that that helped me to drive. I don't know if you want to add if you had something. I love that. Yeah. Um, everything you said really. I was sitting here thinking, have you been sitting in my house? Because it's exactly what I've been doing. Um <laughs> I, I've tried to prepare myself definitely. Simple things first, I agree. And this year is the first year that I said to myself before going on holiday, don't kid yourself, do not arrange any meetings with people the first full day back at work. So we got back Wednesday 17th, Thursday 18th, there's nothing in my diary. And and actually even Friday 19th, there was something in my diary and even that felt too soon. So at least I gave myself that because you go away and you think, yeah, I'll be back on it the first day back. You won't. You've got all sorts of other things to do. Um, what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. Yeah, there are a couple of things I've decided since I've come back that no this doesn't align because really when you're away on holiday you're doing what's true to you and what you love to do if yeah. you've gone somewhere you want to go mm -hmm. and because mm -hmm. you're with yourself and the people you love and so it really makes you think when you come back I dislike that I love that da, da, da. and then also time space and compassion and kindness absolutely and letting holiday stick around I again yeah I've I decided to keep reading I've been so hard on myself for years about reading personal development books that's always on my coffee table but novels tend to be for holiday and I thought nope it's still sunny it's still summery the kids are still off school give yourself this extra time everyone else is everyone else is still away so just still act like you're on holiday but you're working as well so yeah I love yeah. those tips thank you so much Veronica hopefully lots of people can find some kind of inspiration there it's really good timing <laughs> sometimes it helps just to hear that we're all going through that and it kind of gives you the okay maybe because others yes. uh, others go through that too that you don't feel Absolutely. Do something wrong <laughs> no and i think we're all human but also um social media is a bit of a nightmare because uh, someone does one of my businesses someone does that not not my Arbon business but my other one someone else does my social media and that's all scheduled for the summer so mm -hmm. I may seem present but I'm not um and sometimes social media can be uh, awful because you're watching someone else during the summer who, who are completely on it and it's like oh my god no I'm on holiday shush but you've just got to you've got to blinker yourself haven't you and just focus on you and what's good for you that's them they swim in their lane you swim in your lane it's all good. yes it's a lot coming back to you again and again and again and again and believing your own answers and your own wisdom i mean yes learning from everyone of course but then the decisions and how you decide to run your business it's like it has to agree with you not not everyone else and how they do it maybe it works for them but yes absolutely um and lastly, would you, if there was a call to action you could give, because obviously mm -hmm. I've done this interview with you because it's a great topic and I love what you do and I think you're a, a, a wonderful person. So um, how can, not just we help you, but how can, what have you got to offer us? How can we interact with you? Have you got any anything going on that people can like, follow, purchase, set up with you? Right. So, right. so um so couple of things so if anyone would like to get more resources uh so the best uh, is probably through my instagram page which we can probably share somehow but it's at by veronica sucha v-e-r-o-n-i-k-a-s-u-c-h-a uh, and then there is a link to to a menu where uh, people can download a few things and few resources. So there are some videos where I like to give some practical tips. So one which was um, very popular was how to, how is it, how to prioritize where everything is one to one or is uh, is number one. So there's one which was a lot of people said that's helped them a lot. I've added a meditation there that is for those times when you actually get into that go 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 mode and it's really hard to stop um and kind of reset to yourself and there also is a free download a free download is called life and business your business and life success map uh which can be really helpful for these times when you kind of want to look at things from a bigger perspective and it's uh, it's your own sort of self assessment but it gives a nice structure where you can fill things in and then it will come out and be and then crystallize in maybe a few actions you you could be taking and it can 
it can focus and give clarity rather than having that overwhelm of what to do first, what is most important. So these are the, the resources that are available to anyone. And then the second thing I would like to offer is for anyone who really has been sort of in the overwhelm of working and burnout and struggling and kind of feel like it's time to to take some change around that really and would really like to look at it in uh, one-to-one work. So um, I wanted to share it because I would like to have, I'm looking for two to three people to have as a case study. Um, so the idea is that uh, they get a coaching package of six, 12 uh, sessions uh, for a discounted rate and then they become a case study. And the idea behind it is because clients do get nice results working with me uh, so by others then having the opportunity to see the success of other people they'll understand better what it is about how it works how they can also have a really nice work-life balance in life as well as succeed in their business and and feel better about things so that is the offer and the best way to go about it is either through the instagram or through my website there's a link to book a call or this uh, contact to email me and that's veronica com, isn't it your dot com mm-hmm. yes brilliant yes. we'll put those links in the comments after well, well when i post it i'll put the links in Perfect. yeah if anyone has even anyone has any questions or suggestions or anything i'm kind of open to even speak or simple question i'm, I'm happy to be approached um i'm sure you've got really nice friends in your in your community <laughs> I do. They're all amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Veronica. I hope then is, is there anything else you were desperate to add and I didn't give you the opportunity to add it or are we all good? Mm. Oh, the only thing I was going to actually add that is like there is uh, people who prefer working one to one. But if anyone prefers the motivation of a group, which could be another thing that they should join one of your networking groups. Oh, <laughs> So Very that is sweet. a great way to how to get the energy as well. So some people prefer one to one and they prefer to work on their own issues and go deeper and kind of progress faster that way. Other people like a group. So I like options. Collaborate with other people. Thank you. That's a very sweet segue. I thank you very much for that. And we didn't actually even meet in my groups, did we? We met in Lizzie Phillips. Yeah, no. <laughs> I went to network group, which is we also a fantastic another, group to attend. We met in another networking group. So yeah, that's uh, useful. Perfect. Thank you very much, Veronica. So we will share all her links. And then if you want to contact me, you know where I am because of where I've posted this. So we look forward to hearing from you. Any questions, please do send them on. Thank you so much and for your time, Veronica. Thank you so much for having me.